Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to first of all uh, thank all of you all for being here today as I make what I regard as the most important announcement uh, so far of this administration, and that is uh, naming the appointment of our new Chief Executive Officer for the Prince George's County School System. Uh, and I am so proud uh, today to be joined by our school board chair, Dr. Alvin Thornton. I want to thank him uh, for being here with us. I'm also joined uh, by our county council chair, Todd Turner. I want to thank also the chair of our House delegation, Michael Jackson, who is here, uh, as well as Senator Joanne C. Benson, who is chair of our Senate delegation. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we are also joined by our labor partners. I want to thank Teresa Dudley for being here this morning, uh, as well as Doris Reed, who is here. I want to thank you so much. Uh, and Mr. Selman, William Selman, for being here as well today. Uh, I am so proud to announce, without reservation, my appointment of Dr. Monica Golson as the permanent Chief Executive Officer for Prince George's County. <laughs> I want to thank Hazard, Young, Atea, and Associates, uh, the search firm who conducted a national search uh, that brought us all of our candidates, including Dr. Monica Golson. Mm -hmm. I also want to thank the uh, three member selection committee, Aretha Bridgewater. I haven't seen her in the room today, but I do see Hallie Williams. I want to thank him for being here, uh, as well as thank Brigadier General Warner Sumter uh, for all of their hard work uh, and for the three candidates that they forwarded to me for consideration. You should know in all there were 20 candidates uh, from across the nation who were identified by the search firm in this process. And of those 20, three finalists were sent to me by the selection committee. Uh, I had the opportunity to meet all three of the candidates. You should know that I sat down with them and had an opportunity as well to interview them. And while I was impressed with the overall quality of all of the candidates, you should know that Dr. Monica Golson was the clear-cut choice, and this was a very easy decision. <laughs> she is a daughter of Prince George's County. She was born and raised in this community, and her experience includes 40 years in our school system. She began her experience as a student at Barnaby Manor Elementary School, then went on to John Hanson Junior High School and is a graduate of Potomac High School right here in Prince George's County, Maryland. Yes. She furthered her education with a Bachelor of Science degree in mathematics from Florida A&M. She received a Master of Education and Administration from Bowie State University and a doctoral degree in Educational Administration and Policy from Howard University. Dr. Golson has spent and this has been just so important to us. She spent her entire 28-year career in our school system. She has risen through the ranks. Uh, and her children are also products of our school system. I want to thank Lindell Golson, who is here today, and Marcus Golson. Where are they, Lindell? <laughs> Lindell told us before we came in that when you see him, I said, my God, it must be difficult to be in school and have your mom be the CEO. He said, I'm the best reflection of her, is what he tells the people in his school. <laughs> Lindell, we agree. And we honestly feel that for all of our children, they are our best reflection. And so I also want to thank uh, her mom, uh, who is here today. Would you please stand? Mom, Mary, please stand. <laughs> it was fortuitous that Dr. Golson was interviewed by her high school principal, Mr. Sterling Marshall, uh, for her first job in our school system. This gave her an unexpected entry point. She thought she was going on to be an actuary uh, and instead decided that she would uh, begin her career uh, in education. This is where she discovered her passion for serving the children of Prince George's County and served them she has done. She has served them especially well. She began her career at Suitland High School as a teacher later becoming assistant principal at Forestville and Frederick Douglass High Schools, and was also principal of Frederick Douglass and Dr. Henry A. Wise Jr. High School. She was the initial principal there. Dr. Golson later served as associate superintendent of high schools. The record and institutional knowledge that she brings with her is simply invaluable to every employee, parent, and student in our school system. And what I am really excited about is that she has a 360-degree view of our system. 
She sat in the seats of our schools as a student. She then became a teacher. She's also been chief operations officer and also a parent. She has a complete and comprehensive view and understanding of our school system. She understands that we must do all we can to assure that our teachers have the resources they need to do their jobs effectively because she's been one. She also understands that our students must be ready to learn in environments that are conducive to them doing so because she's been a student. And when she first came on the job as interim CEO, she knew that there were resources that were being wasted at the top and she made the necessary changes to get those funds out of the administrative offices and into the classrooms where they belong. <laughs> when she looked at the eight and a half billion dollar construction backlog and renovation backlog that we were facing, she pushed for the innovation of P3 model, of a P3 model that we now have that will allow us to build 18 schools over the next seven years and do so at a cost savings to our county. And as we've continued to have challenges ensuring that teacher pay in Prince George's County is keeping up with teacher salaries around the region, Dr. Golson didn't look at the problem and tell our teachers once again that we were without a solution. Instead, she came up with a plan to restore those step increases that our teachers had not gotten during our recession. Mm -hmm. When I look back to the first day of school this year, uh, and, our, and Teresa was there as well. In fact, she showed up with her Wonder Woman pin on because this was the kind of task we were undertaking. I had the opportunity to spend the morning with Dr. Golson, and we didn't go to the school just to greet the parents and students as they arrived, but instinctively we knew to start in the bus lots, greeting drivers and then rode the bus as we picked up our children. And when we got to the school that morning, we took time to talk to the cafeteria workers and the custodial staff. Dr. Golson and I both wanted every person involved with our children's education to know that they are important and that the jobs they do on a daily basis matter and have a positive impact on our children and our school system. And you know what? Of all the things that are happening under her leadership, they are really making a noticeable difference. I was at a school not long ago, and it made me so proud. I had an opportunity to speak to a student, and this is the best evidence of the work that she has done. I spoke to a student who said, I can tell that there's a change in leadership because I can feel a difference in my school. Ultimately, that is the difference that we hope for, and there is no doubt in my mind that we are headed in the right direction and are making tremendous progress under Dr. Golson and that she is the best person to ensure that this continues. Now, before I introduce the next chief executive officer of our school system, I want to be abundantly clear about one thing. Dr. Golson alone cannot change the trajectory of this school system. She is not a magician. She can implement, implement transparent processes. She can add rigor to the curriculum. She can ensure that best practices and policies are in place to keep the Prince George's County public school system moving forward. She can also continue to do all she's done. She's been meeting with parents and citizens. She's even been at Starbucks. I don't know how many of you saw her in the drive-thru. But she's hosted meetings there and hosted meetings at Starbucks and at community meetings. But the success of our schools and our students will depend on our collective efforts. This is the most important point. It will depend on our collective efforts. Y'all, this one is on us. This one is on us. Mm -hmm. The state of education in Prince George's County depends on each of us. And it's making sure that our, our students are present in the class every day, ready to learn. It's ensuring that we have the best and brightest teachers standing in front of them every day, and that we have leaders at all 208 of our schools who will hold teachers accountable to carry out the vision of Dr. Golson. It must be the collective mission of every single person who interfaces in any shape, form, or fashion with our kids to win every single day. That is the mission. We can't afford to do anything different than that. We have to win for our kids every single day. Mm -hmm. And to do this, we must ensure that our parents and families are actively involved in the education of their children. Our citizens likewise must volunteer to assist in the schools that are right in your own neighborhood, whether you have a child in that school or not. Right. It depends on the collective efforts, the volunteer efforts of all of us. Every resident in Prince George's County, under the sound of my voice, hear me. 
Our schools will improve because we invest in them, all of us. Since I've taken office, I'd also like to thank all of my colleagues for joining me and doing something that I think has been so important, and that is keeping a laser-like focus on children, teachers, and their families. We must continue to de politicize education in Prince George's Absolutely. County. Politics have no place in our classrooms. It's like sports. The coach can create the plays and put the best players in, but the coach can't get on the field and win the game too. So I submit to you that Dr. Golson's success, and this is an important statement, will be a reflection on all of us. So again, I'd like to thank everyone who has played a role in this process and helped us to get here today. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the permanent chief executive officer of the Prince George's County Public School System, Dr. Monica Golson. I've been in this room many times, and it has never been this full. <laughs> I want to first thank County Executive also Brooks for her transformational leadership and the opportunity to serve Prince George's County. She doesn't realize it, but there are so many days when I get home and I'm extremely exhausted. And then I will pull up my personal email and I will see a message that she's delivered and she's smiling as if she just started that day. <laughs> And I get down on my knees and pray about making sure I have just as much energy as she does the next morning. So I thank you for that. It's not often um, being in a leadership role where you get to see women leading in the way that we are able to do today. And so I thank her. I truly, I want to thank our county council members, um, Todd Turner, and I'm not going to call every name. You all know where my heart is. They have been advocates for education for a while, even when I served in roles not, in, not such as this. I'm grateful for you, and I appreciate you asking the hard questions and holding us accountable for our actions. To Dr. Thornton, I say thank you. We have learned this, we have walked this journey together and have been in a learning process together. And to our board vice chair, Edward Burroughs III, I thank you. There is not a place I go where people don't ask, do you really get along with the Board of Education members? <laughs> and so let it be known, I do. We get along because we have one focus, and that's children. And so there might be times where we disagree, but we work to find a solution for our kids. Because we have vowed from the minute that I stepped into this position as interim that we would not allow adult issues to take over. And I thank every one of our board members for that. There's an executive leadership team that when I hired and brought them on, they knew that our job would conclude on June 30th. And I told them that. And there were people who joined me from outside the district who took a risk. But they believed in my vision and they made it come to life. And there is not a day, an hour, um, even if it's in the wee hours, that I can't send a message and that they don't respond and say, we're on it. We got you. And I thank them. But there are 22,000 employees that I am so grateful for. Because their voice is finally heard. And so I'm grateful for them because I'm part of them. I started out as a teacher, as you know, and I'm a CEO. And as I went through this process, the only issue that I worried about was having to tell children that if someone else was selected, that they aren't good enough to lead a district such as this, because I'm cut from the same cloth they're cut from. And so this journey is not about me. It truly is about our 134,000 students and our 22,000 employees. There are some elected officials that are standing next to me, and I want you to know that our delegation, our elected delegates, and um, our president of the delegation and our president of the Senate have been 100% supportive of, of Prince George's County Public Schools, our students, our leaders, our staff members, and they have always been supportive of me as I've moved up the ranks. And I can't say thank you enough. Um, and so there's some extra special people. My mom, who has been... 
my personal cheerleader. I always get off the phone and say, Mom, you're just a little biased. And she says, no, I wouldn't tell you that if it wasn't true. <laughs> and trust me, if you know my mother, she would not. And so I thank you. She has been my son's personal Uber driver and fill in before he got his license. And fill in when I needed it. And even when I didn't ask, she was there. To my sons, I love them deeply. You are the reason I do what I do. And they have never made me feel guilty about the long hours or the consecutive days and have no problem sharing me with the rest of the students in the county. And so I say thank you. I am honored to lead this amazing school district. I never would have thought in my wildest dreams that today would be possible. Never. Because I live in a society where only 1% of African American women lead urban school districts. And today is historic for me. And it's historic for Prince George's County. Because I am the first native Prince Georgian woman to lead this district in over 100 years. <laughs> And I thank you for that. As a parent, teacher, administrator, and now CEO, got to get used to saying that, and now CEO, I promise to continue to strive to maintain a culture of transparency, accountability, and academic excellence. This year, we have been able to achieve a lot. But the road ahead will have challenges, I am sure. But I have learned over these 11 months that those challenges can be overcome if we all just come together. I had an opportunity at the State of the Schools Address to just ask our community to adopt our schools. And our business partners jumped at the opportunity. And what they all said was no one has ever asked. And so it takes a village to raise a child. And I've asked, and they have delivered. And I'm not asking about organizations who come in just one time. I ask them to be there for our children on a regular basis because people come and go in their lives every day. But what I cannot provide them is, is an opportunity. I want to provide them an opportunity to see people and for them to see themselves in others. And so I thank our business community for just that. We are making an investment this upcoming school year that will help to continue to propel our students. We are prov providing additional funds for focusing on our low achieving schools, for increasing pre-kindergarten experiences, for expansion in our career and technical education, for providing mental health supports to our students. Because believe it or not, when they come to school, they still have their own personal issues that they're dealing with. And if we don't address those, then we can't get to the root of the content of the delivery. Making sure that we're in compliance and following recommendations that have been made from Maryland State Department of Education when it comes to our high-risk special education students and also identifying underrepresented students for our talented and gifted program. Those are just the beginning. We have met, had an amazing 11 months, and it's only because we have come together as a community and we all have said we have to do it for children. And so today, I am grateful to lead this amazing school district, one that I sat in the classroom and sat in a seat and learned from teachers, one where my high school principal said he saw it in me when I didn't see it in myself. And one now, where I can represent every single kid and tell them one day this can be you. So thank you. Good morning to all. And, um, you know, I received this phone call several months ago uh, from our our leader, our county executive, and uh, I was trying to avoid the phone call, and she, <laughs> she did not, she did not, uh, she's a leader, she did not let me avoid the phone call, and I'm so thankful that uh, you did not. Um, it's been just an honor to um, be chairperson of the Board of Education, uh, and the honor that I feel is, is heightened this morning with your decision to elevate um, Dr. Golson as our permanent CEO superintendent. Um, well, let me recognize other members of the board who will receive uh, your selection. Um, Mr. Wallace, who's here. Ms. Boozer Strother, who's here. I see Mr. Burroughs, the vice chair. Don't know if there's another board member. Yeah. Valentine. Mr. Valentine. Um, we are thankful for your decision 
And we look forward to working uh, with Dr. Gosen to implement the vision that we all have for our children. Um, you know, I'm a 40-year-old uh, elder now. And so th this event is so significant historically. Those of us who've been around a while know the umbrella that we're trying to raise over our babies. And it's a long, continuous journey. Mm -hmm. And they deserve what they're receiving this morning, this umbrella of uh, togetherness, mm -hmm. integrated leadership at all levels that's child-centered. As our county exec says, depoliticized, child-centered, no adult issues, only children issues. And I'm just so happy to be a part of that. Let us, let us understand the historical significance of this place we call home. There is no place like this in the, in the world. We take it for granted, but let us not. It's great um, achievement, diversity, uh, the great uh, geopolitical ancestry of all of us, right? There is no place like this. And it all starts with our public education system. That's the engine that drives it. There's no way for the pluralism, ideological, cultural, religious differences that we have that can be integrated into a mosaic of oneness without public education. Now, the person who's going to drive that for us, and that's why you see the excitement, is our leader. You know, we create a narrative around her that's an empowered narrative. No negativity. We don't accept negative things about our system, about ourselves, and about our babies. That's what we don't do. So we will, uh, Madam County Executive, with your uh, confidence, we will accept your selection and we'll move forward uh, with the Board of Education, strongly supportive uh, of our new CEO. I will say to you that we had kind of made that choice before you made the formal decision. <laughs> That's good to know. So, so uh, I, want the, I want the public to know that even before the county exec made her decision, which she has the authority to do, we had said, as I told her, we want Dr. Gelson. So thank you for permitting us thank to have you. her. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon. I'm County Councilman Todd Turner. I have the privilege of chairing the uh, Prince George's County Council today. And I do want to thank my colleagues who I'll, I'll uh, announce in a second. We probably had the, one of the quickest council meetings today in order to make sure we got up here uh, because of the importance of today and our support uh, for Dr. Monica Golson as the permanent CEO of the Prince George's County Public School System. Uh, so before my remarks, let me just introduce uh, my colleagues who are here. We have my vice chair, uh, Rodney Streeter. We have uh, council member Denny Tavares. We have uh, council member Sydney Harrison, who chairs our education committee. Council member Jolene Ivey. Council member uh, Monique Anderson Walker. All the way in the back, I see council member Tom Denoga in the door. And then we have our two oh, council member Glaros uh, on my right, Daniel Glaros. And then our two at large members, council members Mel Franklin and Calvin Hawkins, are with us today. So I think we're. I think we could actually affirmatively vote in support of it tonight, but we can't do that because we didn't give, a, didn't give public notice. But uh, I do want to take this opportunity to say uh, this is a proud day, and I know the county executive uses this all the time, a proud day for Prince George's County and for Dr. Golson in particular for this selection. And the Prince George's County Council uh, welcomes the selection of Dr. Monica Goldson as the permanent chief executive officer for the Prince George's County Public Schools. And we congratulate County Executive Angela also Brooks for her announcement today and the appointment, which follows obviously a national search as well as community outreach meetings with uh, various stakeholders as part of this process. And the council urges strongly the support of the state superintendent to complete this appointment process as well as the school board system. And so I do want to thank uh, our partners who are here in government, uh, obviously at our state level, uh, as well as the county school board uh, for their support in moving forward. Obviously, over the years, the council and e each of us individually have developed a, a very productive working relationship with Dr. Golson, currently as the interim CEO, but also uh, in her previous positions uh, as deputy superintendent as well. And her service and partnership have made a positive difference uh, to the progress of education in Prince George's County. So the culmination of today with your permanent appointment 
is a testament uh, to your journey, as you say, uh, to get to this point. And I know uh, several months ago, I was at, uh, we were at Bowie State University for an educator's event, and they highlighted particularly the African-American women uh, who were in leadership positions in the state of Maryland and around the country. And so now that we can say proudly uh, that um, Dr. Golson joins that uh, sorority, I guess, not fraternity, um, as in leadership in that position. And for many of us on the county council, uh, we're not only graduates of the school system, as you are here in Prince George's County, or parents of graduates and current students in the public school system. Always reminds me of that old uh, hair commercial, you know, I'm not only the council member, but I'm also a parent, you know, uh, as part of that. And so we see every single day the hard work that you have done, particularly over this last year as the interim CEO. And that is why we're here today to support your permanent appointment for the position. So let me just say this, Dr. Golson is obviously well qualified and the appointment as Chief Executive Officer for the Prince George's County Public Schools signals a collective commitment to our schools, which is one of the largest in the nation. It's more than 134,000 students and it's teachers, administrators, and support staff. And I, so I appreciate the fact that our union representation is here in support of today's efforts. And so the County Council looks forward uh, to our continued work on behalf of the children and the other stakeholders in Prince George's County Schools. And we want to say congratulations and we look forward to the continued work together to make this the system that we want. And we are very proud today. Thank, Thank you. So uh, at this time we can accept questions. I do want to acknowledge, I was remiss, Denise Yorkshire from Ask, Ask Me 2250, I apologize, I did not not introduce and thank her for being here as well as the other presidents. Um, are there any uh, questions, please? Uh, in the past, four, excuse me, yeah, in the past 14 years, you've had eight CEO schools here in this district. A lot of controversy around the, the departure of um, Kevin Maxwell. How do you intend, Ms. Goldfin, to bring this education system out of that, I guess, error? Well, I would hope the past 11 months has shown that we are on a trajectory that does not allow people to question the past. It is a new day, and we have shown that from the day I entered on July 23rd until now, and we'll continue to do that. I am grateful and honored, as I stated earlier, to represent Prince George's County, but I'm here to stay, and if my record does not show that, I don't know what else will. Dr. Golton or um, county executives, you talk about getting the politics out of the school system, but this school system has been heavily criticized, including by the governor, who has criticized the uh, legislature for adopting uh, the Kerwin Commission recommendations without a way to pay for it. How do you deal with that? And Dr. Thornton, I know you are a, a veteran of the fight for education funding, so how do you three see this? So you know what, and, and Dr. Thornton can speak to it, and, and especially on the, uh, on the finance side of things, but what I can tell you, the point is this, children, teachers, and families. That's what education is about. I think the last um, 11 months uh, have demonstrated that, and one of the things I'm so proud of is we just finished a graduation season where we focused on our kids' academic achievements, the scholarships that they earned, uh, what their futures would be, and this is simply what we mean by taking the politics out of it. Graduation ceremonies and all of those things are about kids. Uh, we understand certainly there are some political decisions that have to be made, and we're prepared for those fights too, to make sure that every dollar that belongs to Prince George's County kids come here. So those political fights, I can tell you that this team is armed for, we're prepared for it, uh, and those fights will continue, and those will be political fights. So let me just say this. We're not warding off all political fights, because there will be some about operational costs. Kerwin will come up, well, how we pay for school construction. Those are fights that we are well prepared to take on. The one that we will not take on is one that attacks the people inside of our school system, uh, attacks our children, attacks our teachers and administrators. That's what we're talking about, is that in this circle, we're supportive of our school system, but those other political fights, we will live another day to fight those. So Dr. Yeah. Thornton, I think, has something to say about that. No, there's, there's every reason, my dear sister, to uh, be 
very optimistic about where we are in terms of uh, state and county and local um, financing of our school system, thanks to the leadership of our legislature. Uh, at least Kerwin, the first two years funded, right? It's great excitement about that. Dr. Golson is able to present to uh, the board for its consideration with the council's support and our county exec support a significantly enhanced budget because of the funding that came from Kerwin. The governor uh, just, um, just asked me to serve on the formula group that's going to write the formula. So there is this umbrella. We don't get sidetracked by little differences that we have. I call it the three B's, Madam County Exec and Dr. Golson. We're going to have a bridge to excellence for our children. This is my favorite word, right? And we have a blueprint for Maryland and Prince George's County. And we have, we'll build to learn for our children. And that's the umbrella that all of electoral and gubernatorial politics and county exec and school board, we're going to rest under those three B's for our babies. They're minor issues, but they'll not be distractions from, distraction from that larger goal that we have. what the process is going to be for that when you all are expecting that to happen and um, how long this contract is and the dollar amount. So all of the terms of the contract will be um, the, um, the, the school board will decide um, and that's why we're glad that they're here today but from today what happens is I make this appointment and I hand it over to the chair of the school board and the school board chair is responsible from here uh, for negotiating the contract uh, with, with Dr. Golson uh, and then that will also be shared with the school board. And so that is, the, so the, uh, the timeline we're working on is all of this will be concluded, of course, by June 30th, uh, where we will begin the new contract period. But the terms of that contract, in including the salary and all of those things, are within the authority of the chair of the school board in the, in the, uh, in the school board. I have a question. I know this is a nationwide search. How thorough could it have actually been since it only lasted a month? Well, these, those were the parameters we were given, um, so it was as thorough as the legislation would allow for. Um, we, the, the process, as you know, had to be initiated by the governor. Uh, and interestingly enough, in this situation, the governor didn't even realize he had this responsibility uh, until we, had, we made an appointment and went to talk to him to say, by the way, we're waiting. We, 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 can you assign this selection committee so we can begin the process? Um, that process did yield us 20 candidates from across the country. Uh, those candidates were very thoroughly vetted by the selection committees uh, that was chosen by the governor. Uh, and then three of those names were sent to me. And I can tell you that I did thoroughly interview uh, the three candidates, including Dr. Golson, uh, resulting in her appointment. Uh, in appointing Dr. Golson in this position, given the overwhelming evidence given to you years ago concerning uh, involvement in questionable activities within the school system, I've not received any information about Dr. Golson. I want to clear that up. Uh, any negative information about Dr. Golson? And I've been in this position for six months, um, so there we don't have. There is no negative information that I received about Dr. Golson. Mm -hmm. I mean, this has been going for years. So I work in the school system. I know what's been. I have, I have evidence of. Uh, violations. I won a case, but you don't give me my money. This is unfair. You cannot uh, target people and assume uh, things are okay when she's actually involved in questionable uh, conduct. So, sir, if you have further questions that you'd like to address, we can get to you afterwards. Are there any other questions for members of the media? So, yeah, so what I've heard from many of our parents, students, and leaders is to the continued transparency has been key. Um, holding every last one of our employees accountable for that work, and more importantly, we will begin to see academic progress. What we haven't had is stability, and I've been here for over 28 years and knowing truly what we need in order to improve Prince George's County Public Schools. Our 22,000 employees have overwhelmingly said they are ready to roll up their sleeves and do the work necessary to put us back on the map to make sure that everyone understands that we are an outstanding school district, not only in the state of Maryland, but nationally. Increases pay to uh, teachers, especially here in this district, between first and fifth grade, I understand. 
Um, th there have been bus drivers protesting and rallying, and there's also been support staff for those schools that would like to see an increase in pay. Is that something that's in your plan? So we're grateful that we just concluded negotiations for PGCEA, which is our teachers union, and ASASP, which is our administrative and central office union. Um, we now begin the negotiation process July, starting July 1 with our other two labor partners. And so I have always shared with our labor partners, it's most important that we do the same that we've done for our teachers and administrators, for our employees that are in 2250 and local 400. The lawsuit between ACLU and the school board um, about the school fees for summer school, have you um, any response to that lawsuit right now? I know the entire state does charge some fees for summer school, but are you looking maybe to extend that to other school years and also just making sure that every student has the ability to go to summer school without paying for it? So we've already begun the process of reducing our summer school tuition rates in less than half than what they were previously. And we did that most recently with the Board of Education several months ago. But what we also know is that we are one of 17 local education agencies in the state of Maryland that offer summer school tuition. So it's unfortunate that they have decided to use Prince George's County Public Schools as a test. But we will make sure that we respond to their call and we will provide the evidence to show that the, de the decisions that we've made are accurate and responsive. Yes, thank you. Our, our top three priorities are making sure that we focus on our low-achieving schools. We have 45 schools that will receive additional funding, and in those 45, I've identified 18 that are chronically low-achieving, and we're providing additional support to those 18 that are also part of that 45. The second one is the expansion of pre-kindergarten. Our community has always spoken about the opportunity to expand, and so we are offering a nine additional half-day to full-day classes and piloting in 17 sites universal pre-K for the first time. And then the third area is a focus on mental health supports at those 45 schools. I'm going to add one more because we also are supporting 50 schools that have struggling readers at grades K to 3. And we started that with a summer reading program this summer and sent every kindergarten, first and second grade student home with a backpack with books in it for them to read over the summer. And we will also be reading those books on Facebook. There was a real focus on getting uh, the upper middle class families back into the public school system and um, out of the private schools. And there was a question on how to do that and it seemed like the focus then was specialty programs. Where are your thoughts uh, on that? And I'll just leave it at that. So over the past couple of years, we've continued to have an increase in the percentage of students who have enrolled in Prince George's County Public Schools. And we have made a major investment into programs, such as our Spanish immersion, language immersion programs. And we'll continue to offer them. Those students are now moving into fifth grade. And so it's the expectation of those parents that we create a hub, a middle school hub, for all of those language immersion students. I'm a firm believer that continuing to add programs to bring people back is not necessary. What we have to prove is that we have the academic excellence and rigor that we'll offer every student in every last one of our schools, and that will bring them back. Any final question? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for coming. <laughs>